the 1800 turn, 6 p.m., and it really is not possible to overestimate the extent of the disaster here at Quatre for the Allies. The army is in tatters. The reinforcements are bottled up, and it's highly unlikely they'll be able to recover the situation. This is the victory that uh, Ney did not have, and, well and the defeat Wellington did not have. So, um, I don't know if it's going to be interesting or not, but we're going to keep playing this one out. Starting with the 1st and 3rd Divisions here, these reinforcements are having too little effect. A ridiculous gambit to try and get in behind the French failed. More leader casualties has stripped the uh, ability of the 3rd Division to really maneuver effectively. Only the Hanoverians can move. The only option here is just to push in take heavy casualties by the guard in order to sweep back these uh, French units and see if they can make some sort of an effect. The bad part is that the French cavalry is right here and they have shown themselves very willing to charge. So as soon as they get past this infantry they'll probably get run down by that cavalry. Shifting up a little further west. The most effective formation at this point is going to be the second Dutch Belgian infantry only because they have leaders to command the formations. The Brunswick contingent has lost all of its leadership so they are completely unable to maneuver. The Hanoverians here of the 5th Division, well they were never worth much but they are just trying to form a little position here to stem the tide and the cream of the 5th Division, the British brigades are taking horrific casualties. Three, four, five casualties and basically breaking down to the point of uh, complete ineffectiveness. But at least they have leaders, so Wellington right here can activate somebody and get them moving. Um, on the subject of command, all the leaders gone. Unfortunately for Wellington, his only ADC remaining is Gordon, who is the eight movement factor, the slowest. So he is slowly making his way to Wellington before he can even attempt to fly and activate another brigade. So things are looking very dire from the um, Allied perspective. You might think the French would be really happy but they've been fighting for a long time with no reinforcements. The 5th Division here is starting to take some real casualties. See this gap opening up here? Because two battalions were destroyed by gunfire. The others are taking casualties and starting to wear down. The 9th Division is actually in pretty good shape. They've, they've taken some casualties, but obviously they secured the crossroads here, and that's a, that's a big win. This gun line... They need to get those guys limbered up and up here to uh, solidify their position. But going across to the west, the 6th Division is completely strung out here. These forces remain out of command only because everybody they're facing is out of command, so they're just going to continue to snipe at each other. The cavalry is still very potent, only taking a couple of casualties. But the rest of the 6th Division here is definitely in a bad shape. They should probably try to pull out, but, you know, the, the rules really make that difficult. The best they can do, hope that, well, they might be able to extricate one or two, but the rest will probably end up being destroyed or routed. The only reinforcements they've received have been the Reserve Cavalry. these two brigades and we have opted not to use any command to move them the last couple turns. This could be the turn where we want to settle the infantry and get that cavalry up to maybe deal the killing blow. Now the only meaningful victory is to exit units off of the map in this direction. 
So that might be our next goal. Try to sweep the British Brigade out of the way and get the 5th Division off the map to go help at Lenny. Lenny has remained a slugfest. The Prussian right is still dangerously exposed. They have some cavalry going off in this direction here. But um, otherwise, the bulk of their reserve, their second corps, is now trying to shore up the defenses here. That might not be such a good idea. They probably need to stop short of this area and set up because they're slower. They're kind of trying to deploy off the march and not having good success because the French are already engaged and just keep kind of stealing the march on them. But the French Third Corps had been attacking this direction. Now they're starting to veer off to the north here, trying to concentrate. They still have a lot of uh, fighting capability. They've taken some casualties, but the 10th, the 11th, and the 8th divisions are all still in pretty good shape. And the goal here is to move them this direction. They're basically trying to open up space for the guard, which is already here, to move this direction and hit the center. The French Fourth Corps has been heavily engaged in this area for many hours. They've taken pretty severe casualties. Really, the 12th Division is the only functional fighting formation. 13th and 14th right here have been so depleted that they can't really do much of anything other than occupy some ground. So the 4th Corps is going to move this way, again opening space here for the rest of the guard to hit the center. Now across the, the creek there, we see the bulk of the 2nd Corps assembling. This is the 8th Brigade. This is the artillery. I think they're going to attempt to set up a line across here, you know, very strongly held by artillery, to try to, you know, blunt that French uh, advance. The cavalry remains kind of bottled up back there. Are they holding the flank or just out of command and not doing anything? I guess it depends on your point of view. But there's probably no no intention to spend any command on them. If they can get uh, initiative, I think this brigade can roll for initiative to help move. Otherwise, they're just going to sit there and wait. Which brings us to the east side of the field. And really nothing much has changed here in the last few turns, the last hour. Basically, the amount of command required to make anything happen here has made it unreasonable to even try. Been trying to ro roll for initiative for the cavalry, kedged some units up forward, but otherwise they're just sitting there waiting for the center position to maybe stabilize before we can risk squandering a command point over here. Now the drag of it is that these guys are exposed to this fire from these cannons, and they've been taking some casualties. Maybe we'll have to expend the command point to move them back. I don't know. <laughs> this is not going well. I, I, I underestimated how much command it would require to move, you know, essentially five or six formations. And we don't have that much command at our disposal. And it's sorely needed elsewhere on the field. One last look at the center position, the, the remnants of the first corps, and there's not much. They are on morale level one, and they've taken pretty horrible casualties elsewhere. The fourth brigade is still here in Lenny. The cavalry is set up on the other side here. I think they're going to try to protect this wide open area there. Uh, historically, the guard surged through that area, but we're going to, as the French, concentrate everything in one location to keep the command situation under control. But the rest of the Prussian First Corps is going to sort of stream this way, try to hold this end of the line and allow the Second Corps to come in and take over the fight. As you see, much of the lines here are 
completely denuded of troops as the First Corps have been pushed back, either through casualties or th through morale checks. So that's where it stands. We'll get right into our command phase now. Here's a look at the current leader casualties. Many dead. A number of them are wounded. This one was wounded and he is coming back. An ADC for the French Reserve Cavalry. He gets to return this turn. We have a very full draw cup. Ten French chits, uh, seven Prussian, and six British Anglo-Allied. A lot of uh, light cavalry initiative this turn. Virtually every formation that could gain initiative did. So we're going to have a lot to choose from. Here are Quatrebaugh and Wellington contacted these two brigades, the two British brigades. 5th Division got them in command. Picton used his command point to get the 3rd Brigade, the Hanoverians. So all of the 5th Division should be able to maneuver this turn. Wellington himself ended up here. His aid is over here, so he was unable to fly to activate anyone. That leaves us one more um, command point for Prince of Orange, which he used here for the 2nd Brigade of the 1st Division. Additionally, I permitted the Dutch-Belgian cavalry to roll for initiative. They rolled a 1 with their ADC commanding them. So for the first time in about 5 hours, they'll actually be able to do something. Now the French, as usual, activated or gave a command point to the, first, to the second corps. And a little bit of break. They gave another command point to the reserve cavalry that is here. And then the second cavalry rolled for initiative. So those formations will be able to maneuver this turn. Most of the usual suspects in command here in the knee. The difference is that the uh, guard grenadiers for the French here are being given a command point to get them moving. Um, the yeah, the Prussians got some light cavalry initiative here, along with the French light cavalry initiative. So a few more formations that, uh, eligible to move that have not been. Maybe a little different is that the 5th Brigade was not given a command point, is not in range of the 2nd Corps leader, so they won't be maneuvering this turn. But over in the east, as promised, this Prussian cavalry will be able to move one of our command points we allocated, and then we had a light cavalry initiative for a second command point. I don't know what we're going to do with them, but that was our goal. Um, additionally, we allocated one of our precious command points to the 12th Brigade here, basically just to try to get these squares out of the way of all that artillery. We'll just draw our first chit here. You know, the Allies have their chance. We'll see what we can get done here.
I think the plan is that there is no plan. Just shifted the 12th Brigade around right here, mainly to get them out of the devastating artillery fire there, and as promised, push the cavalry across the brook here. Uh, it's not going to accomplish anything, but we are trying to spread the French out. Going west towards Ligny, we're pushing the First Corps, basically getting it out of the way, more or less, just because it's so beat up, moving its artillery remnants and the last, last of its uh, infantry behind its cavalry here and the 4th Brigade in the town. The second corps artillery made a big line right here. Should put up some resistance. Then the 8th Brigade is right behind it, ready to support it if the French make a run at it again. Um, I kind of messed up the, uh, the howitzer battery here for the first corps. I couldn't remember where it was, so we'll move that next turn. I tried to move it as part of the second corps, but it is not, of course. Keeping with the 2nd Corps, the 7th Brigade basically took up positions right in through here. With the 6th Brigade, more or less in kind of a reserve spot. They have the 5th Brigade here, the 7th and the 8th there, so they can respond where needed. Didn't do a lot with the cavalry, just moved them up got them across here towards the flank. This is all that land there, cavalry, and they're just not very, they're not very good. They're not good for charges. They're not good really much for defense. Here at Quatre Bras, we're going to try a couple of crazy assaults here with the remnants of the British Brigade here. This whole flank is going to collapse, I know that. Um, can't see a way <laughs> to win over here. But, um, remainder of the British 5th Division is right here in these two battalions. The others are routed and one was destroyed trying to withdraw from the front of those guns. The Hanoverians, after miscounting some movement points, took a position right here, uh, stride the road, kind of blocking it. No real help. Just wanted to get this cavalry out of this general order terrain to make sure they'd have a chance to to charge if they ever get another command point. That's a big if. And finally the guard division went ahead and launched some assaults across the line here. Now they should be able to just push these skirmishers away, but they might have a chance to do some damage to these two formed battalions. Somewhat effective fire combat all along the line, denoted by the white numeric loss markers. Moving to the east, the French are definitely starting to take a beating. The losses are adding up. They've been in constant combat for many hours, and a number of units are just starting to get whittled away. This one, for instance, six increments is down to, down to two. This one's still in good shape, but just the slow disintegration of the French is also uh, occurring at the same time as the British. Lots of, lots of fire here, inflicting a lot of French casualties, so this little Brigade is making its, uh, its presence known. And additionally, this, uh, this shot here actually was the final increment of that French battalion, so they were eliminated. Some casualties here in the uh, heart of the fighting at Lenny. We weren't getting any morale checks, which is the uh, biggest effect of fire combat. We did get our Prussian guns involved somewhat. There's some slopes around here that the French are able to duck behind. But they did get a couple of couple of uh, rounds off and didn't cause any casualties, but at least 
Print you know they're there. Only, the only melees are here at uh, Quatre Bra. Let's start with this brigade. Now this X was being assaulted, but it was vacated due to a fire combat uh, event, and as I have learned, I am able to advance into that hex. I can essentially assault an empty hex and take it. I had that wrong once before. So that leads us to this attack. That will be a four increments against two. So that should be a pretty, uh, pretty tough hex for the French to hold. Let's do our pre-melee morale checks. And it was too tough to hold. They will fall back. They're going to disorder right through there. I'll cause a morale check on that guy. But that battalion is very stout, so the British will advance into that hex. So that's fairly successful. They push back and occupy two hexes. Zoom out, there's the retreated unit. We'll finish up with the guards charge here. I am going to retreat this unit. Probably three hexes. Let him advance into that hex. Of course I have that cavalry right there so that's to the French advantage, but the one right next to it, if he retreats, he retreats through here, but then he exposes those guns to an attack. So I think I would rather risk my skirmishers than those guns. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, execute the pre-melee morale checks. Both sides pass their morale checks and they proceed to melee. It's a four to one odds and the British chief defender disorder. So that will cost an increment and retreat the unit. I guess one thing I neglected to think about was I would have to retreat through those guns so I would risk them failing morale check. The only something to think about in this system. And I failed the morale check. So I lost my guns anyway. So I lost my guns and an increment of in infantry. How's that? So the guard will occupy that hex and they're starting to clear a little space for themselves. The next one up is right here against that battalion. Another two increment battalion. And that'll be two to one uh, odds for the pre melee morale check. They both pass. We proceed to melee. Three to one odds, and the British achieve a defender disorder. So, another successful attack. They will lose an increment and retreat. So, suddenly the French are looking a little shaky over here, which is, of course, the whole purpose of trying to enter the guards over here. Now we have one more assault. Three French increments against four, so that's a one-to-one. -one. We'll run our morale checks. Both sides pass pre-melee morale check. Proceed to melee. Odds are one and a half to one. We achieve a zero slash one star, which means no losses for the British, one loss for the French, and a morale check. The morale check is passed, so that'll complete the melee right there. The French will take a casualty and remain in place. The guards will stay in their hex. And that will complete our 
melee phase for the Allies. With only a few units to rally and uh, route, we'll just complete the Allied chit pole and go to the next one. Hmm, reinforcements, interesting. Now the actual only reinforcements we're expecting this turn is just the return of an ADC for the French. The next actual off-board physical reinforcements will be for the British at the 1840 turn. So that's not too interesting really. We just entered him at our French depot and moved him up the road towards the reserve cavalry off in the east there. 